Here I'm going to use a bow exerciser and a leather tab to protect my fingers to correct a problem with the draw. Now a bow exerciser is no normally used um, to build up strength and uh, to some extent to develop form. And they're very good for that, though they have their disadvantages. They tend to, um, because you're not actually shooting, you're, you're, you're developing sometimes the tendency to creep which means you start to let down just before you shoot because you're used to letting down every time you, you do this. The other thing is that uh, in uh, Persian, Turkish, Arabic shooting there is a, an issue about uh, you use the arrow to uh, determine your proper draw length and this you just go for maximum draw length as far as you can draw. Facing towards say a mirror gives you a much better idea of where your arms are in relation to your shoulders than standing sideways to the mirror and looking straight at it. Uh, this also applies to your phone camera and to a video camera as I'm using here. So you can work out whether or not your arms are out of position. And of course this one, uh, you can at physically do this by looking backwards but you, your head's in the wrong position and, and things go. It's, not a, it's really just not as good. This way I can see my shoulders are too high, my elbow is too low, all kinds of things are going wrong here. And it's mainly because without an arrow as a guide I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit out of uh, position. And so it's not quite so good. The next um, shots are going to be from the back, a thing you can do with a video camera but if you can do it with a mirror uh, that's a little bit too flexible. Notice again the, the um, the shoulders are, are getting slightly out of position, uh, the elbows are a long way out of position and you can't feel this normally uh, unless you're really concentrating hard and you've, you've kind of done this kind of thing and then memorized what it feels like. So it's much better to either have someone to show you or in this case where you've got to practice by yourself, um, use a video camera. It's really easy and most phones can do this quite easily. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm putting on a, uh, a Gelard style quiver here uh, from the period slightly post the Ilkhana, before the Ilkhana dynasty in Iran. Um, the bow is very light. I use it for training people uh, when they're beginning. Um, I use it for helping people to correct form. I use it to help correct my own form. Uh, once I actually um, got it for a training uh, purpose, I suddenly realized how useful it was to be able to actually draw and shoot an arrow to just gauge what you're doing without having to concentrate on the bow quite so much. First few shots, I will have my shoulders slightly offset to the direct line to the target, which shortens the draw by about 20 or 30 millimeters. This is a fault if you're not doing it on purpose, and I wasn't doing it on purpose. I was wondering why I was having trouble getting the full draw, when it wasn't a matter of strength, it was the fact that I drew back to my ear, but the arrow wasn't fully drawn. And what had happened was I gradually, over a period of time, started to turn my shoulders, well, particularly the um, the left shoulder there, away from the target. Now I'm altering my stance to physically set in my mind to get my shoulders in the right position. The arrow's drawn further, and everything goes quite smoothly. It's also it's not so noticeable with this bow, but it will be later. It's also much easier. I'm attempting uh, in this to use a draw style that's recommended in several of the early manuals, which is to start with the hands at the same level as the shoulders. This is not the same as, uh, say, Gao Ying style. There's a couple of other things people do to adjust their draw length um, that are essentially sometimes work particularly in short range hunting situations but aren't really good and one of them is leaning towards the target and the other one's leaning away from the target the first one is when the arrows feels too short and your 
shortening your draw. And the second one is when you're trying to get a longer draw without actually drawing longer. Uh, so you, you, you're, you're moving your head out of position uh, so that your anchor point feels right. But what you've actually done is you've changed your draw length. So now, having finished with this bow, I'll go on to a bow that's two and a half times heavier. Uh, the draw length uh, for this uh, bow is these arrows, so that they should draw fully to the, um, the back of the hand grip. They've got blunts on them, so there's a little bit of, uh, of uh, direct feedback. Now, as you saw there, the arrow was short drawn because the shoulders are out of line. It's, it, once you start to look for it, you can see it quite easily. Now, watch carefully and you'll see the arrow doesn't really get to full draw. Now, from my anchor point, it felt like full draw, but it wasn't full draw because my shoulders had, had turned slightly. I'm using my stance, again, to emphasize this, I'm using my stance to reinforce the mental focus on my shoulders. You can do this without changing your stance at all, but it's just a good way of reminding your brain what's going on. I think this is going to take a little bit of time for me to correct in myself because it's crept in without regular shooting uh, over this period. It's, uh, it's easy for you to get out of pressure. And without shooting with other people who you can ask whether you're doing things in the manner you intend to, it's also a bit easy to start to drift away from what your, your form is. This is why regular practice is so important. Well, let's see. Ah, it's getting better. And his last shot.